What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. If I ever find a little glasses of business, they're dead meat. Hey everybody, welcome back to What's Your Favorite Scary Movie, where I talk to people about their favorite horror movies. My guest today is former AEW World Women's Champion, Nyla Rose. Hey, Nyla. What's up? So there's a few more accolades in there, but you know. Oh, please list them. We're talking spooky stuff. I'll let it slide. I'll let it slide. <laughs> I love the sweater. You came prepared. Thank you. I knew the assignment. Yeah, exactly. You understood <laughs> the assignment. <laughs> so horror movies, uh, obviously what I cover for a living, which is the best job, maybe right after professional wrestling. And uh, <laughs> it's been a lifelong love of mine. I was curious, have you always been into them or is it something you came to later in life? As far as I remember, I've definitely always loved them. I I can't tell you when it started. I can tell you it definitely started earlier than it probably should have. Yeah. Because anytime there's anything spooky on TV or going on, my mother always brings up the fact that my aunt had no business showing me movies when I was as young as I was. So I definitely watched them much earlier than I should have, but it's pretty much always been a part of me. Yeah, that happens a lot with horror <laughs> fans. Uh, a lot of them come to the genre way earlier than maybe they should, but you know what? We seem to turn out okay for the most part. Yeah, yeah. You know, thanks thanks to fun uncles and fun aunts, I suppose. Exactly. Yeah, it's always them. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember like your earliest horror movies that you saw or that any that made an impact on you early on? The first like real like movie that I sat down and re recall watching was Halloween 3, Ooh. which had nothing to do with Halloween. Yeah. <laughs> so it was kind of like somebody, I remember somebody telling me, oh, you should check this out. You should watch this. You, you know how like talking about the Halloween series, they had a copy of Halloween 3 at my local Blockbuster. And I was like, cool, let's do this. And I watched it. I was like, that, that's what you're crazy about? Like an old Irish guy making spooky masks like what <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was like it's, it's okay i guess but then it, no, no 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 you watch the worst one it's like oh, okay so i went back watched them all and i'm you know horror ever since when i ask people to come on the show of course i ask them what their favorite horror movie is and you gave me a list and one of them uh among them the one that i chose to talk about with you was the night of the living dead remake from 1990 directed by tom savini uh who is you know a legend and icon mostly known for makeup effects not for directing films so this was interesting to watch. It had been probably 20 years since watching it before I rewatched it this week. And um, I'm a huge fan of the original. It's one of the earliest horror movies I remember watching, but I found the remake so interesting. And I'm curious to see why it's among your favorites. I, you know, I don't have a good answer for it. It's just <laughs> uh, everything about that movie really clicked for me. Like, I feel like every character was very iconic in their own right, but just uh, everything about it. As far as I recall, it was my first introduction to zombies and like the whole idea and concept of like, what is going on, you know? And just being trapped in a house. It's like a place that's supposed to be comforting and you have freedom, but they had neither of those things, you know? and they're trying to survive and they had no idea how long you know there's just so many unknowns and it's an easy predicament to kind of put yourself in yeah i think that's one of the the wide appeals of the zombie genre in general is when people watch it they like to put themselves in that situation and think what would i do there and that becomes more difficult with bigger more extravagant movies like even going to a shopping mall in dawn of the dead it might be hard to imagine like breaking into one but just being in a house anyone can imagine that like a small yeah. house with nowhere to go but these zombies coming after you. So yeah, I totally get the salience of that. Oh, for sure, for sure. And it just, you're trying to find ways to reinvent the wheel, right? So when you have different things like night, dawn, day, trying to move the location, like you said, the shopping mall, another mundane thing that many of us have experienced, but how to heighten the horror and, and just bring new elements to that. And then, you know, years down the line, you get what, uh, 28 days later. Now we've got zombies that run. Yeah, what? <laughs> yeah the you zombies. Know, just, yeah, the zombies. <laughs> <laughs> right when you thought you knew what to expect, from a zombie film, they, they flip the script on you. So it's it may seem like old hack, but there's always ways to reinvent. For sure, yeah. Although I do feel like with the zombie genre, it's it's getting down there uh, as far as like, I, <laughs> but people will always come up with a new way. Like I may think, oh, we've done everything we can, but I'm sure in a few years, there will be a new movie or TV show that is like, but have we tried this with zombies? Yeah, of course, <laughs> yeah. of course. And I, you know, I welcome it. I'm, I'm waiting for it. Bring it on. How familiar are you with the original Night of the Living Dead from 1968? Not too 
too, too familiar. I've definitely seen it. You mm-hmm. know, I've definitely seen it a few times, but the, the remake holds a special place in my heart. It just, that's my go-to. That's my baby. That's, that's my jam. <laughs> it was so interesting to me watching this as someone who has seen the original so many times and really have sat down and analyzed it and gone through it in depth. This remake is very close to it as far as structure yeah. goes. And that's no surprise since George Romero wrote this screenplay. And I think the whole reason they made this remake was because of the copyright issues with the original. And they were like, yeah. well, if we're not getting paid for that, might as well get paid for a remake. Yes. Something a lot of people kind of don't know is is for a long time, <laughs> Night of the Living Dead was public domain. Like you might see clips of Night in, in like a Pizza Hut commercial or something, you know, like because they can use it, it's free license. So it's really cool to just see where these clips turn up. It's the go-to movie when you have a film where people are like, oh, let's watch a horror movie. And then yeah. it cuts to <laughs> Night of the Living Dead on the TV because yeah. it's free. <laughs> so yeah, that was the reasoning behind this remake getting made. And yeah, Tom Savini directed it after George Romero's encouragement. It's so similar, but with with some uh, very modern updates. It doesn't feel like watching, for instance, the Nightmare on Elm Street remake, where you're watching it and it feels like a totally different movie and it just feels like remake. This feels more as though, I don't know, it's almost like it's a campfire story that you're really familiar with and someone is telling it again, but with a few embellishments. Yeah, that's that's a really great take on that. I, I like that expression. That, that's very much what it feels like. Almost, in a sense, a continuation of the story rather than, you know, a retelling. That's, that's That's wonderful. I like that. Yeah, it's like a re-rendering. And I I don't know if that's because the original is old enough to almost feel in the same vein as like the Universal Monster movies, where it's just part of our pop culture DNA. It's something that we all know. So a retelling that's so close doesn't feel like a a reboot or remake in the traditional sense. I think also its similarities help that sense. (laughs) I was also kind of blown myself away with the realization that this remake in 1990 came out 22 years after the original, right? That would be like someone remaking Final Destination today. Like, that's the same time gap. And now you've made me sad. Right, I know. (laughs) Thanks, everybody. Good night. It's been a wonderful... (laughs) Yeah, you watch this and it's like, oh, it's such a modern retelling of that old movie. And it's like, (laughs) no, it's been longer (laughs) between the remake and now than it was between those. One of the changes that the remake does in comparison to the original is the character of Barbara. It's probably the biggest change because in the original, she's very hysterical, to use a traditional term. Not very useful. Like, Ben is literally slapping her around to be like, get a hold of yourself, woman. (laughs) And uh, in in the remake, she's played by amazing stunt performer Patricia Tallman, who's just a total badass and is made into a much more active and more traditional final girl. Oh, 100%. That's one of the the things that, like you said, the refreshing upgrades. Like, it's just, it's really cool to see, you know, the original Barbara was very much for the time couldn't have that Barbara in this new film. You could, but like, I don't, it just would not be the same in any sense of the word. So having this new badass Barbara, who's not afraid to get grimy, get dirty, get her hands wet with blood, if you will, <laughs> you know, she's out there saving the day. And in, in my opinion, a bit of a cultural shift for those final girls. And that's when you kind of started to see more of them in horror films, take it to the monster and not so much be a damsel in distress. Yeah, and just running away. She's the one who's more like, why don't we just run past them? They're all slow. Like, she wants to get out there and do stuff. (laughs) And then we had Dwayne Jones in the original playing Ben, who, amazing performance. And somehow they were able to match that by getting the legendary Tony Todd to play Ben. Well, that's exactly how the legendary Tony Todd, another icon, just phenomenal in everything he touches. Yeah, just the presence he brings whenever he's on screen in anything. Just like the seriousness, especially this like younger Tony Todd is so, like this is pre-Candy Man. This is one dashing, man. Yes, 100%. I, I have nothing to add to that. It's just <laughs> like you hit every nail on the head. He, you know, for a while for me before I like really, really got into who's who, you know, I would see him. I was like, oh, it's that guy, you know? So it's like, he, ha- like you said, he has a presence. When, when he comes on the screen, you just know to pay attention to him. The emotion he brings to when he's a zombie at the end and he looks at Barbara with like this sadness in his zombie eyes, that, that sad look on Tony Todd's face is just... I love it. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a perfect touch because they had connected, they bonded, you know, they understood each other, even though they came from very different lives and they didn't know each other before getting, you know, trapped in this house. They, they quickly became a, a symbiotic. They they were very much a unit, the two of them. So to have that, that subtle nod to that relationship at the very final moments is brilliant. I almost believe that was Tony Todd's choice rather than like a directorial note. It was just such a subtle thing. You know, if you, if you blink, you'll miss it, but it's, it's 
it's there and it's it's powerful. Yeah, and I like what you said about their relationship because in the original, you know, they're helping each other out, but he seems very annoyed by her most of the time. <laughs> Understandably so. But in this one, he definitely treats her as an equal and is looking yeah. to her for ideas and is like trusting her, especially over Harry, who he's like, uh, here, I'm going to give you the gun. Keep an eye on that asshole because yeah. uh, that guy sucks. I love that Tom Tolls, who uh, the late Tom Tolls, who was in a bunch of Rob Zombie movies, he plays Harry Cooper as like this Italian guy. I don't know why he, be he became this Italian <laughs> asshole, but as someone of Italian heritage, I always love seeing like asshole Italian guys in there. <laughs> oh, what? You trying to figure out if somebody's got a car? You don't think we've been through all this before? Mine is broken down on the interstate and the kid here doesn't own one, if you can believe that. Speaking as, as a performer, as an actor, like sometimes you make these wild choices for no other reason than to amuse yourself. <laughs> right. And they just they just work, like for whatever reason. You're like, I'm gonna try doing this today. And it just, it works, it stakes, and it becomes something more. So it's, it, kudos on him. <laughs> what a place to be stuck, in the middle of nowhere. Bunch of yo-yos. I'm curious if you ever think about horror when it comes to your job. Like you said, you are a performer, you perform in front of a lot of people, and you are often playing the villain. So do you ever think of like horror villains and bad guys and like draw inspiration or like put yourself in that mindset? 100%, 100%. Especially if I'm in the position where I get to direct vignette or, or you know, something that's, um, for lack of a better phrase, without breaking kayfabe, a prepackaged <laughs> yeah. deal. You know, if we're, if we're putting something in the can, if I get the opportunity to kind of like lend my artistic eye, if you will, I'm like, what if we shoot it like this? And, you know, we kind of creep around this tree or have the figure already there, but then they move. It's like little notes like that that I picked up from horror movies, every kind of horror movie throughout the ages. Love bringing that kind of stuff to, to the screen. I love hearing that you're able to have that kind of creative say in the, the things that you do. I, I honestly didn't expect the performers to have that, be able to put their input in as much as that. It's, that's, it's not always the case. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not, uh, not always the case and definitely not in every company, but creativity is cherished and encouraged at AEW. Definitely welcomed. And um, I probably get on everyone's nerves with like how much I, <laughs> hey, can we try this? Can we try this? Let's try one more this way. You know, like what if we, like Nyla, we, we've got other stuff to film. Like, so I'm like, okay, okay, I'll save it. I'll save it for another day. Save it for another day. <laughs> but I'm, I'm always thinking of it. Uh, wild, wild ideas. Well, you know, I'm actually not surprised to hear that because uh, while I was researching you before this interview, I saw that you were in a show called The Switch. Is that right? Uh, I was. Show? Not, not a horror film, but no. yes. yeah. <laughs> sitcom yeah. shot in uh, Vancouver, Canada. That's awesome. Like, I mean, wrestling is part acting. You know, there's it's, it's such an interesting profession because it's not only athleticism, but it is performance, like you've been saying. And so 100%. for you to have that acting experience, I'm sure, helps so much in that aspect of the role. A hundred percent. I, you know, that's one of my major uh, uh, keys of advice when somebody asks me, you know, how do I get into wrestling? How does it? Well, first, I encourage you to go down to your local community theater, take a couple of classes, definitely take some improv classes, yeah. you know, because uh, when you get in front of journalists and the media, they're going to throw questions at you and you, you, you got to be able to think on your toes, you know, you really got to commit to whatever it is you're putting out there. So that's probably where I would absolutely start. I I love that aspect of it all. I mean, that's what keeps me and so many other wrestling fans coming back is it's a combination of so many things, just the showmanship of it all. I love it. It's a little bit of everything. It's it's like a stew. Pro wrestling is like a stew. <laughs> You've got like the rock concert appeal, the music, the the fireworks, uh, get the adrenaline going. Like you said, the performance aspect, the stunts, the, it's just high octane from start to finish. You get a little bit of everything. Are you ever interested in perhaps uh, doing more acting in a non-wrestling capacity? More a hundred percent, a hundred percent. It's where I started, you know, mm -hmm. acting and wrestling always been passions of mine. I've skeletoned out a few scripts, Ooh, uh, nice. about two horror scripts, if you will. Awesome. Um, <laughs> so I definitely looking, waiting for the right time to really, really flesh those out and uh, make something of them. Besides Night of the Living Dead, what are some of your other favorite horror movies? Because I know you gave me a whole All list. Of them. I had to pay. <laughs> All of them. Man, there's so many. Um, uh, where do I even begin? Uh, Devil's Pass, a little bit of a sleeper hit. Like, yeah, I don't you, think I've seen that. I was say, a lot of people give me that very yeah. reaction when I mention it. <laughs> it's it's based on real events uh, that happened in Russia. The, some time ago, some explorers were on an expedition and they just vanished overnight. Like, not a single trace of their, and this is real, like, not a single 
visible trace of their body. The tents were slashed up. Things happened from the inside out, but like nobody ever found out what happened to these explorers, people on the expedition. So this film kind of takes that real life story and expands on that. I'm not gonna give too much away, but it's, it's a found footage film. Oh, nice. Um, but it's it's really cool. It's really cool in the, the ending of it. It's like, oh my God. Like I did not think I was gonna enjoy it as much as I did. It was one of those films you put on because you have laundry to fold. Yeah. And then by the end of it, you've only folded like two pieces of laundry. Yeah. <laughs> like it, it sucked me in. Uh, so that one, D. Snyder's Strange Land, another Ooh. cult. Few more people have probably seen this one, but that's that's a cult favorite. Hellraiser 3. Hell on Earth, all right. A lot of people mixed emotions about it, but that was my first experience with Hellraiser. Uh, and I instantly fell in love with it. I, I just covered the first four Hellraiser films on my channel. So I got real in depth with them. And Hellraiser 3, uh, the thing that I liked about it was the relationship between the, the two female leads. It was like almost a sisterly relationship. Some people thought it was like a sapphic kind of thing. Yeah, I, yeah. It could be read multiple <laughs> ways, but like, I just liked the way that they were looking out for each other and trying to help each other in the face of that that asshole JP or whatever the club <laughs> owner his name was. Again, another one I haven't seen in quite some time, but I just, so much iconic imagery, you know, the, the DJ with the CDs. Yeah, and, the CD. <laughs> The, the, the column in the beginning is like a piece of art. Mm -hmm. That one stuck with me. It's birthplace of one of my favorite lines. I still quote it to this day. Anytime something crazy happens and somebody's like, Jesus Christ, I'm like, not quite. <laughs> <laughs> And nobody ever knows where it's from. Oh, no one ever like, picks up on that quote from Hellraiser 3. Hell on Earth. <laughs> yeah, like nobody gets it. What are you talking about? That <laughs> movie thing. Yeah. You, wouldn't, you wouldn't get it. You wouldn't get it. You wouldn't get it. So, so yeah, those are, those are uh, some of my favorites. And then like the Saw series as a whole. Yes. I love the Saw series. I'm a huge fan of like Easter eggs and like universes tying together. The continuity so, of it all. The yeah. Continu so, so the fact that every film is neatly, tightly interwoven, like this happened while well, this happened, but this film that you're watching three years later actually took place first. Like I love that. Seems incredibly well thought out. And I really appreciate it. I also love the Saw series because of that same reason. And yeah. it's funny because I have compared Saw to a soap opera, which professional wrestling is also often compared to. Just the, yeah, the the ridiculousness of the complexity of the storylines. I always say that with Saw, each movie takes a scene that you already saw, zooms out a little bit, and is like, and that character was there the whole time. Yes, yes, that is exactly right. And that's and for that very reason, I am forever a fan of the entire Saw series. Well, sure. How'd you feel about that new one, Spiral? I haven't seen that one yet, but it's it's, it's on the docket. We're going to get there. We're I won't spoil there. anything, but it, okay. it does not delve into the soap opera. It's, okay. it's, it's like a, a fresh, like, new story, which I was That's like... That's what I heard. So I'm kind of eager to see what they do with it. Mm -hmm. It's worth checking out. When I talk to people about their favorite horror movies, I like to see if they can stump me with some trivia questions. So I understand right. that you've got a few questions for me, and this movie is one that I am not super familiar with, so I am hoping I can at least get one right. That's my goal okay. for today. Yeah. Okay, let's, and I'm gonna roll up the sleeves for this. Make, Ooh, okay, so, rolling up the Freddy sleeves. <laughs> all right, are you ready? Yeah. All right, we're gonna start off easy. Okay. Who are Johnny and Barbara visiting at the cemetery? Oh, their mom. Yes. Who that died, is correct. I think, four months ago, I think they said. That is or correct. Or like five, yeah. three months ago, something like that. Okay. All right, you got the first one right. Yeah. Here we go. <clears throat> this is the mid card question. Okay. So we have the <laughs> we we have like the, the curtain jerker yeah. opener question. This is the mid card question. Yeah, we have the dark match. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> In which state? is the movie set in. Oh, I'm not 100% positive, but I'm pretty sure it's still Pennsylvania, right? Damn, yes. Yes, okay. Romero Correct. is just, he's Pennsylvania guy, like Pittsburgh, yes. like hero, so. Yes, it, and, and, and that, that that was a little tricky because mm. it's not explicitly stated at That's any time when that is. All right, this is, this is I, I hope this is the the, the, the the gotcha moment. This is my like main event question. You like, got your finishing move here? Yeah, this is, I want to I wanna call Mark Henry so he can hit you with this time. <laughs> <laughs> well, the main event, yes. right? Because like this is about 13 minutes into the film, we are treated to an unexpected special guest, a cameo Easter egg, if you will. Who do we see that does not belong about 13 minutes into the film? 13 minutes in, okay, uh, some kind of 
cameo doesn't belong. And I'm assuming you're not talking about the cemetery zombie's ass cheeks because it turns out his <laughs> pants are split open and you see his butt. It's, it's, <laughs> it's not. It's, it's not. It's not his butt cheeks. No. Okay. <laughs> not the butt cheeks. Okay. It, it is an actual person. It is a person. Okay. It is an actual person. What's interesting is that 13 minutes in feels like it's after that opening cemetery scene, like after uh, Johnny, played by Bill Mosley here, which is awesome. I'm, I might be incorrect about the time. I said roughly 13 minutes in. Okay. It's so it's it's near the beginning of the film. Okay. My guess is that it's the person who is walking up to them and saying, help me. And that you at first think if you're familiar with the original, you're like, oh, that's the cemetery zombie. Oh, the cemetery zombie is talking. And then the real cemetery zombie comes in. Is it that character? No. Okay, I don't know. About 13 minutes into the film, okay. during that whole kerfuffle, we catch a glimpse of the camera operator in the door. <laughs> oh, in the reflection? In the reflection. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, you got me. Did I guess, I don't know if that counts. It's a bit of a trick question. That's, just, that's why I tried to phrase it that way. Someone we're not supposed to see, a bit of an Easter egg cameo. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you know what? It's it's a screwy finish. They happen, you know? The, the screw job happened. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> The okay, cemetery exactly. screw job. <laughs> yeah, Vicky just came in and distracted me. <laughs> I'm a heel, baby. That's what we do. That's what right? we do. Kind of a bitch. Well, good job. I almost went three for three, but... Dusty finish. <laughs> <laughs> Nyla, thank you so much for joining me for this conversation about Night of the Living Dead and horror movies and pro wrestling. It's been so fun. It's been a pleasure. I, I'm going to go watch a ton more movies, and hopefully you'll have me back. Hell yeah. I would love to. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Awesome. Awesome. All right. See ya. See ya. <laughs>